There's a reason why there are always trade rumors swirling around Harrison Barnes at the trade deadline and during the offseason, and I expect this summer to be no different. Harrison is a valuable piece for any team, and there are many teams out there that could be a piece away from a championship contender that believe HB can be that guy. However, here in Sacramento, I don't know if Harrison Barnes is capable of being the third scoring option that the Sacramento Kings need in order to make the playoffs next season. We'll talk about that, plus comments from the G-man Gary Gerald on this Harrison Barnes 2021-2022 Sacramento Kings season review. You are Locked On Kings, your daily Sacramento Kings podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And now... Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time, time for another episode of Locked on Kings. Hello and welcome to Locked on Kings, your podcast hub for Sacramento Kings coverage all regular season and all off season. If you're looking for in-depth analysis, game-by-game breakdowns, highlights, interviews with local and national experts, full coverage of your Sacramento Kings from January through December, this is the podcast for you, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. And my name is Matt George. I have the privilege of being your host here. Just wrapped up my eighth season covering Kings basketball. This is year five for me hosting the Locked on Kings podcast, and I currently work for ABC 10 News in Sacramento. And I have... Thoughts. I have plenty of things to say about the season that Harrison Barnes had from his incredibly hot start to him kind of disappearing at times to him having the opportunity to really step up and shine with both De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Savonis out at the end of the season. And he kind of faded into the background. I'll tell you why that concerns me and the possibilities of the Kings trading Harrison Barnes this offseason, why I'm hesitant about that. And we'll talk about uh, what kind of trade value Harrison has and if he is to stick around in Sacramento, why I don't feel he can be or rather should be the Kings' third scoring option if they're going to be a winning team. He's capable of being a third scoring option, but I just don't know how good the Kings would be if he was that scoring option. We're going to discuss all of that on today's podcast, but we're actually going to start the same way we started all of our review podcasts to this point. And if you've missed uh, my first three season reviews, I did one on De'Aaron Fox. I did one on uh, Davion Mitchell. And then my most recent one was a combination mainly on Kings general manager, Monty McNair, but also a little bit about associate head coach, Alvin Gentry. Go and check those out. Every single episode contains my thoughts, my commentary, but mainly Uh, analysis and insight from Kings radio broadcaster Gary Gerald, who is back with me here today to talk a little bit about Harrison Barnes. Harrison Barnes got off to a incredibly hot start this season, and we knew uh, as great as he was playing and as fun as it was to see, we knew it probably wasn't going to be sustainable. Uh, And I had moments towards the end of the season, G-Man, where I I wanted a little bit more out of Harrison, especially with both Fox and Sabonis out. And I know a lot of people look at Harrison Barnes as the third scoring option for the Sacramento Kings on offense. We could debate whether or not that's the right role for him. But this is the second straight season that at the trade deadline, we heard that there was a lot of rumored interest in him. There is already conversation about the market value that he could have this off season. I'm so hesitant to trade Harrison Barnes, not just because historically that's been a tough position for the Kings to fill, but Harrison in so many ways that you could probably describe better than I can. And you understand better than I do being around the team more. He, he makes such a difference in so many different areas that don't show up on a box score. And we don't see things in the locker room, things behind the scenes. Can you share a little bit about just the professional that Harrison is and and your time around him, what you've seen that he brings to this team that is invaluable? Very simply to me, he's, he's a pro's pro. I mean, the 10 years of experience that he's had in the league, it's that old cliche. He's been there and he's done that. You know, he's been on playoff teams. He's won a championship. He knows what it takes. And he brings that same consistent demeanor to the locker room and to the floor all the time. And I, I look at him as a glue a glue kind of a guy. And I, I yes, he could be a tremendous help to a lot of different contending teams in roles that might find him coming off the bench or whatever. I love the way his his level of common sense The fact that he doesn't get too high, he doesn't get too low. I love what he does in the community very quietly. Uh, He is is an amazing human being. 
And I think the Kings are really fortunate to have him still in the mix. And I, I don't know what the future holds for him and for the Kings, obviously, but I just think that he's one of those guys that's very tough to replace, particularly in the locker room and kind of behind the scenes. He also strikes me as a guy, G-Man, who can make a major difference for a new head coach coming in. And he can, not just the the consistent, steady impact that he provides, but someone who can make that transition for a new head coach easier and help not necessarily welcome them. That's not his job per se, but someone who can just bridge that gap a little bit easier or, or someone that you want to start as a new coach with that kind of guy on your roster to help get things running a little bit. Am I, am I right in that assumption in your mind? Well, I think absolutely. I, I think any coach would welcome an individual like that. And I, and Harrison fills, I mean, he checks an awful lot of boxes and he does it in that quiet, efficient manner. There are times when you say, we need you to be more aggressive. And I know we heard that as a familiar theme first with Luke Walton. Then we heard it of course, with Alvin Gentry. And there were nights when, you know, Harrison might be in a cruise mode for whatever reason, or maybe he was working so hard on the defensive end, he couldn't be the force on the offensive end that we wanted to see. And sometimes he was reluctant to pull the trigger on a three-point shot. He's not like the pure shooter that, and that mentality that some pure shooters have. It's like, man, I'm just going to keep gunning them. I'm going to keep throwing them up there. Well, if a couple of them don't fall, Harrison's looking for other ways to help his team. Hmm. And he's not, he's not launching those shots. And I think there were, there were some nights that maybe that, that hurt the Kings a bit. But that being said, would I want Harrison Barnes on my roster? Darn betcha I would. More great stuff there from the G-Man. And before we get to my thoughts and comments on Harrison this season, this offseason, and next season, I want to tell you a little bit about one of the great sponsors here of Locked On Kings and an amazing way to make money on your Kings knowledge and general sports knowledge. I'm talking about Bet Online, the number one source for all your betting stats and sports information. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including the basketball playoffs happening right now. Uh, Major League Baseball season is underway. Bet Online is your continued source for all the sport wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. And just because the Kings are out of the playoffs doesn't mean there's nothing to bet on the Kings. Right now, in fact, there are tons of fun prop bets and future bets available. You can bet on who the next head coach of the Sacramento Kings is going to be. Once the Kings get their draft pick, you can bet on who they take with that draft pick. Uh, there's so many things for you to bet on once the uh, the over-unders come out and the championship odds come out for next season. You can bet on that as well. So much great stuff. Make sure you head to the website today. Use your mobile device. Learn more about the trends and the action. Make some money and have some fun at Bet Online, where the game starts. As you could probably tell listening to some of the questions that I asked G-Man there, I have the utmost respect and admiration for Harrison Barnes. Like, totally recognize, even when I'm frustrated with him, how fortunate in many ways the Sacramento Kings are to have HB. And what's interesting about Harrison is that you remember when... Vlade Divac signed him to his four-year contract, and it was very similar to the contract the Kings game Buddy healed. It was $24 million the first year, then $22 million, then $20 million, and then he's going into his final year of the contract next season for $18 million. And I remember so many people freaking out, mocking the Kings, saying, what in the world are the Kings doing paying that much money for Harrison Barnes? Are they insane? HB is not capable of being that guy. This is after his stint in Dallas where he was okay playing most of his time at the starting four spot and had to be a main scoring option there in Dallas. And ultimately it wasn't the best of fits. Now the Dallas Mavericks, I know for a fact, regret in some ways trading Harrison Barnes because that team could definitely use a player like Harrison Barnes right now, especially with their playoff run now that they have Luka Doncic. But there were still a lot of people that, and maybe people still to this day that think the Sacramento Kings overpaid for Harrison. But, I think a good measure of Harrison's value and the quality of contract the Sacramento Kings gave him has to do with how much repetitive interest there is in Barnes every single season and off season. And this summer is not going to be any different before we get into his trade value and the possibility of what he could be for the Kings next season. we got to talk about, of course, what he did this season and overall, across the board, or, or mostly across the board, Harrison, 
actually had a, a good season this season or, or, or improved this year. It was very marginal, but a lot of improvements this season compared to last season with the Sacramento Kings. You could look at scoring right away. Average 16.1 points per game last season, up to 16.4 this season. Again, marginal growth, but it's still an improvement. His shooting percentage overall did go down from 49% to 46%. Rounded up to 47% if you really want to. But his three-point shooting percentage climbed, again, very marginally from 39.1% to 39.4%. Point four percent. Once again, Harrison Barnes, a near 40% three-point shooter. And yet, his three-point attempts only barely went up by 0.3 from 4.4 a game to 4.7. And I'm personally of the belief that Harrison needs to be taking 5.8 to 6.5 three-pointers a game especially if he's going to be considered a third scoring option in Sacramento playing alongside best players here that do most of their scoring around the rim and in the paint and not from the perimeter. If you look at the other numbers for Harrison Barnes, rebounds did go down slightly from 6.6 to 5.6. Assists also went down from 3.5 to 2.4. Uh, steals stayed the same. Blocks stayed the same. His turnovers went down slightly. Fouls turn, uh, went down slightly. Those numbers ultimately don't matter. Another great number for Harrison Barnes is he played 77 games, started all 77 games for the Sacramento Kings that he played this year. So one of his best abilities is just availability. He's constantly available. Harrison got off to a nuts start this season. And we all knew, we all knew it was not sustainable, but we still wanted to enjoy it as much as possible. And when I say a nuts start of the season, I mean nuts. I mean, look at these first few games for Harrison, starting with a 36.9 rebound performance in the win against Portland, had a 25 point game against Utah, 24 points uh, against Golden State, had uh, another or a couple of 23 point games, 26 point game. Uh, these are all just in the first month of the season. Later on in the season, he would start to dip back down to where we are used to seeing him in the mid to high teens, which is basically what Harrison Barnes is. But you would sprinkle in a 20 point performance, a 29 point, uh, point performance, 28, uh, 30, 25, 27. Uh, these are all over the course of the season, but it's how the season ended for Harrison Barnes that I, I leaves a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth and leaves a bit of a sour taste, I know, in King's fans' mouths. And remember, this was after, obviously, the, the DeMontis Sabonis trade and after both Sabonis and Fox were injured and, and finished the season on the bench. Barnes, essentially, as the third scoring option with those three here in Sacramento, had the opportunity to become the scoring option, the guy and instead, he kind of deferred that role to Davion Mitchell in a major way, and even Dante DiVincenzo and, and, and others to some extent. He was not, and you heard me talk about this many times over the last month of the season on Locked on Kings, he was not as aggressive offensively at the end of the season that I wanted to see from him. And we could talk about his aggressiveness multiple times over the course of the season. I just talked about how I need his three-point numbers to go from four and a half a game to upwards of six a game. How his season ended, these numbers aren't horrendous, but I just expected more than a 12-point performance. His final two games of the season, he scored three points and two points. And both of these games, he played, well, the, the game that he scored two points, he only played 13 minutes. He played 26 minutes when he only scored three points. He had 12 points in a 29-minute performance. 18 points is pretty good in 35 minutes, 13 points in 34 minutes, 17 points in 38 minutes, 11 points in 33 minutes, no points in 24 minutes, 10 points in 22 minutes, 6 points in 36 minutes, 9 points in 38 minutes. This is all in the final month of the season when De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis weren't really playing, or at least one of them was out. I am very skeptical about how successful the Sacramento Kings can be when Harrison Barnes is their third scoring option. Now, there's no doubt about it. He is one of three established, bona fide starters on this roster. That cannot be debated. Debated. No matter where Harrison Barnes goes, he is a absolute NBA starter. And in Sacramento, maybe more than anywhere else, that has tremendous value, especially for a team that is loaded with fringe talent that you don't really know where their optimal role is in Sacramento. We know what Harrison Barnes' optimal role is. It's a starting winger. And being a starting wing 
is a hot commodity here in this city, here for this organization. Because Kings fans will remember before Harrison Barnes, with the exception of Rudy Gay and going all the way back to Ron Artest, the Kings have had a really tough time at that wing spot over the course of this playoff drought. A lot of names have come and gone and simply not worked. And on top of that, wings are incredibly valuable in the modern NBA. But most championship caliber teams, now I know putting the Kings in a championship caliber conversation is a massive jump and a bit unrealistic, but bear with me here. Most championship caliber teams have a wing that is one of their top two players, or at the very least, top two scores. Harrison Barnes, at the absolute best to me, can be a top three scorer on a playoff team, not a championship team. But for the Kings to make the jump into the playoffs next season, assuming Harrison is still a Sacramento King, if he is a third option, even though his scoring numbers at 16 points per game, shooting 40% nearly from three-point range in the, in the mid to high 40s and field, overall field goal percentage, even though those numbers are encouraging, I my eye test personally over the course of the season, the inconsistencies suggest to me that the Kings need a more established, viable, consistent third scoring option. And to me, if you go into next season and Harrison Barnes is your absolute no hands down, uh, established, complete fourth scoring option. If we know for a fact that Harrison Barnes is scoring option number four behind Fox, Sabonis, and player C. I think the Kings are a damn good basketball team. Offensively, I think the Kings are in phenomenal shape. And you could argue that he was that coming into this season with Fox, Halliburton, and uh, Buddy Heald. Two out of those four guys aren't here anymore. And we know that Fox and Halliburton struggled to score at the same time. Buddy Heald was good at scoring, but nothing else. And even times would shoot the Kings out of basketball games. So that's very different compared to Fox, Sabonis, Player C, and Harrison Barnes. If the Kings can find a way to upgrade that starting four or starting two spot with a third scoring option and have him be their fourth scoring option, I think they're in tremendous shape next season. But that honestly might not be achievable without trading one of two players. Davion Mitchell, who I talked about in my, my review earlier about I like his optimized role as a sixth man for the Sacramento Kings, not necessarily a starting backcourt partner with Fox. Or maybe you have to trade Harrison Barnes to get that guy. I've always been hesitant with trading Harrison Barnes because of the history of the Kings and their inability to fill that position. And we have to be realistic about what the Kings are trying to do here. It's easier for the Kings to trade a player like Tyrese Halliburton because De'Aaron Fox is on this roster. It's easier for the Kings to trade a guy like Rashawn Holmes because you have DeMondis Sabonis on this roster. After Harrison Barnes at the wing spot, the Kings get tremendously weak. No disrespect to Mo Harkless. No disrespect to Justin uh, uh, Holiday. After Harrison Barnes, that wing spot, pfft, garbage, essentially. Certainly not starting quality. So if the Kings are going to trade their starting wing, their established starting wing that they have very few of for a starting four or starting two, sure, you could upgrade that position nicely. I think Harrison is going to have a tremendous amount of value this offseason. Absolutely. But then you're back to having a gaping hole at that three spot that, like I said, wings are tremendously important on playoff and championship caliber teams. I just don't know what deal is out there unless you're trading Davion Mitchell and probably your draft pick to get the player that you're looking for. Maybe you could find that player in the draft. Maybe you could find that wing replacement in the draft for Harrison Barnes. Maybe you trade HB. Let's say you could find a way to get John Collins from Atlanta trade HB and, and a package not including your draft pick to the Atlanta Hawks. You bring in John Collins. There's your starting four. Love that upgrade. Absolutely love that upgrade for the Sacramento Kings. And then you use your draft pick. Let's say it ends up being seven. Let's say the Kings get lucky and they move into the top four. You draft a wing there. Okay. I like what the Kings are doing. I like where they're going, but John Collins becomes your third scoring op option more than likely. So you're feeling pretty good about that. 
but is that too much to put on a rookie winger heading into a season with high playoff expectations? Does that in the short term make the Kings at best break even with the, the output that Harrison Barnes provided? It's a risk. If Harrison is going to be traded, that to me is the more than likely scenario because I don't see a trade where you can move Harrison Barnes in a deal and get back a younger wing who is at the same level as Harrison or better than Harrison. I just don't know if that's going to happen. And you could trade Harrison for an older wing who's better than him. But again, you're probably having to attach something to Harrison that you might not want to attach in order to get that job done. Again, wingers are hot commodities in Sacramento because not only or wingers are hot commodities in the NBA because not only are you looking for someone who can be that scoring option here, you're also looking for someone who has a pulse defensively who can help this team defensively. And while Harrison is not the greatest defender on the planet, he plays on the terrible defensive team and has for the last three seasons, he still is a solid, consistent defensive option that the Kings team defense I think needs. I don't know what to do with Harrison Barnes, honestly. I think, again, the best case scenario is the Kings find a way to upgrade their two spot or four spot, bring in the third scoring option and keep Harrison Barnes as their four. I think that's the absolute, or as their fourth scoring option. I think that's the absolute dream scenario. I don't know how possible that is, especially if you're also trying to keep Davion Mitchell. Unless the Kings move into the top three in the draft and you just straight up trade their your draft pick away and swap it for a player. And next week, I'm actually going to do a fun hypothetical podcast with a guest talking about what happens if the Kings were to win the lottery. Would they take a player number one overall that helps them right away? Or would they use that number one overall pick to chase an established NBA talent right now that can make an immediate difference? That's going to be a fun conversation. Again, I'm doing that next week. But for right now, I want to hear your thoughts on Harrison Barnes, his trade value, what you would do with Harrison Barnes, your thoughts on his season overall for the Sacramento Kings. Send those to me at Matt George Sack on Twitter, Matt George Sports at gmail.com. If you want to email me and if you're watching on YouTube, leave your thoughts in the YouTube comment section down below. Locked on Kings, as always, brought to you by our great sponsors and friends over at Built Bars. Built Bars are protein bars that taste like candy bars. And now that we're in the summer months, that means some fun summer and spring flavors uh, that are coming. You can use Built Bars like I do to get you through a round of golf. They get you through a day, get you through a workout, take it to the gym with you. Uh, if you're going to school, uh, make sure you're snacking on them before lunch or after lunch to not only get that sweet tooth uh, handled and feel like you're eating a candy bar, you're also getting something that is good for you and, and gives you that protein boost that you need. There's so many great flavors, mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond. Right now, there's a new white chocolate cookies and cream bar that's so delicious for you to try. These bars are covered in 100% chocolate, have 130 calories on average, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. And in addition to their built bars, which they're, of course, known for, they have these new marshmallow puffs, which are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. Yeah, it's a real thing. Marshmallow treats that are loaded with protein and are good for you. Whatever you get on built.com, use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off. Again, that's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. So we've done De'Aaron Fox, Davion Mitchell, Monty McNair slash Alvin Gentry, now Harrison Barnes. And the final two reviews coming Friday and Saturday are groups of players. The next podcast is going to be on the players that the Kings acquired at the trade deadline. Of course, mostly focusing on DeMontis Sabonis, Dante DiVincenzo, and Trey Lyles, with, of course, commentary from the G-Man on those three players. And then the final episode is going to be on three Kings that were here all season long that could be on the team next year, might not be on the team next year, some players that I want to see on the team next year. I'm talking about Chemezi Metu, Damian Jones, and Terrence Davis. So those are the final two reviews coming this week. And then next week, great podcast plan for you. You're going to have a, a three straight guest podcast, actually four straight guest podcasts I have planned right now. I'm going to talk about the uh, Kings coaching search. I'm going to have an interesting discussion with my colleague uh, from ABC 10, Walt Gray, about whether or not Kings fans are somewhat to blame for this team being in a 16-year playoff drought. It's kind of a controversial topic, but we'll discuss that. We're going to talk about the recent comments from DeMarcus Cousins in a Mark Spears article 
basically dragging the Kings through the mud and in many ways, rightfully so. We'll talk about that. And I'm also, like I said today, going to be doing a podcast on the fun hypothetical. What if the Kings were to win the draft lottery this off season? What would be their best path going forward? We'll talk about all that. That's all coming next week. But again, two more review podcasts uh, for you this week. And if you, speaking of reviews, could leave a review of the Locked On Kings podcast. I really would appreciate that. Best place to do that is Apple Podcasts or iTunes. Hit five stars. Leave a little blurb about what you like about the podcast. Customer reviews are excellent. Help us out a lot. Uh, and if you're on Spotify, listen on Spotify, uh, there's a five-star review system there. If you could hit five stars, I really would appreciate that as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. Can't wait to have you join me tomorrow. Until then, my name is Matt George. You've been listening to Locked On Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network.